and welcome to SA Weekender Favourites. Today we have an action-packed show for you as we travel across our beautiful state. So stick around as we take you on a journey around South Australia. Here's what we have for you. Hazy swims with the Ferraris of the ocean in Victor Harbour. We sample Adelaide's best high teas with a twist. And I arrive in style for a VIP tasting experience in the Adelaide Hills. But first, Bryony discovers the latest big Barossa Red. It's an emergency. I'm out of wine. Now, I could just go down to the bottle shop, but why would I when I can go direct to the source in a fire truck? Officer Mark Moore is my driver, with Commander Janine supervising from the back. And this has to be one of the most unique ways to take a wine tour of the Barossa. Mark, what on earth gave me the idea for a fire truck? Just that point of difference. We're always looking for something different to bring to the Barossa. Uh, and what's our top speed? Top speed, I think, is about 90 kilometres an hour, so fast enough to get around the Barossa. <laughs> well, that's kind of an understatement. Mark and Janine tailor their tours to suit their clients' interests, which in my case can be pretty broadly categorised under wine. Well, this is my best ever arrival at a cellar door. Something different, <laughs> isn't it? Sharkies have grown grapes in the Barossa for six generations, and winemaker Damien has built a striking timber cellar door to showcase the fruits of his labour. But I wasn't expecting this. Oh, this is amazing. A magical descent under the vine roots into a subterranean barrel room. I think I've found my new home. But no time to dream, we're on a mission. You know what else is fantastic about a fire truck? Storage. about sirens and flashing lights. Yeah, no, they want to lock you up and throw the key away, so Aww. sorry, no sirens, Aww. no flashing lights. Oh, Mark. I, I know. Our next stop is the David Franz cellar door, a cosy, rustic stone cottage with a welcoming fire and a range of provisions for building your own platter. Janine and I are trying out a semion named for the winemaker's mum, Barossa legend Margaret Lehman. Mark, is trying out the water. I can taste it from here. Here you could happily escape the real world for an hour or three, but I can go one better than that, time travel. Now, after a hard day's wine tasting in a fire truck, I do like to come home and slip into something comfortable, like the 70s. Janine and Mark have turned their own four-bedroom home in Nuriutpa into an extraordinary retro B&B, which they hand over to guests in its entirety. This is our environment every single day. I, I wished I had a normal haircut, but I grow my hair just so I can <laughs> still live in the 70s and 80s. The Moors have done this before, just next door, with a 50s-inspired B&B that they still operate, but they just couldn't stop at one. Because I think we just want to live through the decades, like sort of the 70s, 80s, that was pretty cool stuff. So we had this four bedroom home and thought, well, we've done the 50s, 60s, let's do the 70s, 80s. And we can remember what the 70s, 80s and was all about. The sad thing is, yeah, we can remember yeah. what the 70s, some of this stuff is our wedding presents. <laughs> <laughs> that we've just opened. Yeah. <laughs> Your dreams will be positively psychedelic in these bedrooms, which altogether can accommodate eight, making this a great house for a gang of groovy friends staying in the Barossa. Just look at the entertainment area, complete with swinging Steve Austin. But don't get too carried away. Janine's been known to rev up the cop car for unruly guests. Actually, it's just another very cool option for touring the wineries. Cruise over to both of Janine and Mark's websites to check out their tours or their accommodation. You'll be hard pressed to meet more welcoming, entertaining and unique hosts. What happens for you guys next? Like, what happens when you slowly creep up to, to, to where we are now and you're up to date with your decor? We'll have to look for another property. I'd like to do Art Deco, actually. Yeah. <laughs> 
You don't look keen, man. No. <laughs> <laughs> After the break, dishing up Adelaide's most delectable high teas. Just load up. <laughs> well, dress up and bring your best manners because today I'm going to take you on a tour of some of Adelaide's most interesting and exquisite high teas. We begin here at Udder Delights in Harndorf where high tea is served with a cheesy twist. SA Tourism Hall of Famer Udder Delights has long been a mecca for cheese lovers. Founder Cherie Sullivan had several requirements when creating her high tea menu, that it be fresh, homemade and served with cheesy flair. And of course, local sparkling and piping hot tea was a given. Let's talk about this very yeah. impressive tower so we have what here. What we've got on the low level is our Utter Delights actual heritage brie here with local dried fruits and crackers. We go onto what we call a chicken ribbon sandwich. Another cheesy twist here, we've got our caramelised onion and Utter Delights goat curd tarts. And then on the top we have got a little bit more cheese because it's our berry cheesecakes, some orange and almond and cardamom cakes and finishing off with some macarons just because of the little French influence I guess with the cheese. Yum, I so love the way you actually... carried the cheese all the way yeah, through. Yeah. Yeah. And you can enjoy these utterly delicious temptations either in the cosy cellar where we're sitting or up in the cafe area. What about high tea etiquette? Is yeah. there a way that you're meant to approach this? Me generally, I go all savoury then I go all sweet but you know, sometimes you've got a savoury stomach and a sweet stomach, and mm -hmm. if you sometimes alternate back and forth, you can fit more in. Okay. <laughs> My next unique high tea destination is aboard Adelaide's beloved Popeye. Gliding along the river torrents, watching the sights go by, there couldn't be a lovelier way to enjoy sweet and savoury delights served on gorgeous china. With her father Tony having recently retired, Bianca Schumann is now at the helm and she's thrilled her new idea is a hit. Bianca, this is a pretty unique offering here. Hi tea, we're on the water. What's the response been like? The response has been really amazing. So we started in December last year. We've sold out 15 so far. I'm sure you, in your job you get to taste test. So yes, what are some of the lucky. best? So I'd say the strawberry cheesecake and maybe the lemon drizzle are my favourite. Okay. Yeah. I think those okay. sausage rolls look nice yeah. as well. Fluffy scones, dainty cakes and meringue kisses are homemade by mother and daughter team Julie and Emily. They hail from Yorkshire. You can't get more authentic than that. There's nothing like a pretty cake and a cuppa to help your cares float away. I think it's a really different experience for people to have. It's lovely to enjoy something so nice but then have this going on in the background. I think it's really special. My next stop is a must for anyone who is serious about their high tea. Well, beautiful, elegant and first class is how I'd describe the Mayfair Hotel. And it's just the same for their famous high tea. Relaxing in the comfort of its graceful interior, sipping tea from Wedgwood, China, this has to be the ultimate girls' day out. On offer are delectable savouries like sausage rolls and ribbon sandwiches, exquisite macarons and scones, and even pastry shoe swans. It's an Instagrammer's dream. Cheers. Cheers. So Bethany, tell us a bit about the offering here at the Mayfair because it looks absolutely beautiful. Oh, thank you. Look, we try to keep it as classic and as traditional as possible. We really celebrate the old hotel style, inspired by the Ritz and Claridge's. We've got a pastry chef and she makes our own puff pastry. So, you know, the sausage rolls and the curry puffs are all beautifully made. And if you still have room for more, you can choose from a sumptuous selection of goodies from the Mayfair's famous French gâteau trolley. Maybe you should try one of these ones. No, no. Excuse my fingers. Strawberry. For more details about dates and times for the high teas at Utter Delights, the Popeye and Mayfair Hotel, just visit their websites. Make sure you book. This is a treat you don't want to miss. Cheers. Next, I check out a VIP experience in the hills, rockstar style. 
Hi, this is my gorgeous friend Megan and today we are headed to the iconic Lane Vineyard because they have a fantastic new experience called the 360 degree panorama. We're meeting another friend there for a rare girls day out so we thought why not make an entrance? And what better way to arrive in style than by private helicopter? Taking off from the airport, we're headed to the hills. With our pilot Brenton at the controls, all Megan and I have to do is take in the sights below. This beats sitting in traffic any day. Just 15 minutes later, we're a world away from the city. We land right in front of the Lane's renowned multi-award winning restaurant, famed for its food, views and of course wine. But we won't be stopping here today. Hi Jane! Hey. Ah, this is my gorgeous friend Jane and now for our next secret location. We are arriving via Hummer. It's how we're rolling today ladies. Great! <laughs> Heading into the vineyard itself, our destination isn't what you'd expect. Perched at the top of a hill, lined with row upon row of vines, is the aptly named Panorama Tasting Room. Hey guys, Hi. how are you? Good, how are you? Welcome, Thank welcome you. to the lane and our brand new wow. Panorama experience, come in. We are greeted by our lovely hostess, Ashley, with glasses of sparkling. Then it's time for the big reveal. All right, girls, so I'll get you to face forward, take a sip on your bubbles and get ready for the big reveal. Ah, oh, it's a nice blue sky. Cheers, ladies. Cheers. What a great way to spend a day. <laughs> Love the Adelaide Hills. With sweeping views stretching from Mount Lofty to Mount Torrens, this is the ultimate room with a view. This is the idea of Marty Edwards, who, with his father John, planted every vine on the property and wanted to share his favourite spot. There's an irrigation valve right up on top of that hill and I used to go there every Saturday and turn that valve on to water the vines. And every day I was blown away by the view and I just thought, one day I'm going to build something up there. Secluded up high in our private box, we're served some tempting tastes from the kitchen with matching wines. So, the first wine to the left is our Gathering Savion Semillon blend. Spends about four to five months in French oak, so it's beautiful creamy mouth texture, really lovely lemon, lime flavours. That one is going to go beautifully with your trout. Sitting in the middle of the vines isn't meant to be flashy, but simple and beautiful. Serene, it's really peaceful here. Really Don't you think? Yeah. So what does Marty hope people feel when they come here? A sense of place. You're standing just above the vines. You're drinking the wine from those vines. It's made in the winery 200 yards away. So if that doesn't give you a sense of place, I'm not sure what will. Well, it's amazing how quickly one can get used to this VIP treatment. I absolutely love the Adelaide Hills, so we are going to linger a little longer here at the Lane Vineyard and the real world can wait. Isn't that right, girls? <laughs> if you'd like to enjoy the 360 degree panorama experience, you can either splurge and take a helicopter like we did or make your own way there. Either way, the incredible vistas and wines are waiting for you. The Lane's website has all the details. It is an afternoon of relaxation not to be missed. Granite Island is famous for its iconic horse-drawn tram, its huge granite boulders and the little penguins that call this place home. But recently, there's been some fishy business going on here. You might remember the popular Swim With The Tuna experience at Port Lincoln. Well now, it's here, located just a stone's throw from the Granite Island jetty. Oceanic Victor offers visitors the chance to immerse themselves in a purpose-built sea aquarium, and I for one, can't wait to get amongst it. 
So we're about to jump in with these guys. Uh, these tuna are southern bluefin. There's about 40 of them in there. They've been described as the Ferraris of the ocean because they're that quick. So we'll see if we can get near them. If you can snorkel, then this experience is for you. No matter what your age, the average fish in the aquarium currently weighs around 40 kilos, but they can grow upwards of 150 kilos and live decades. They're very big boys. I've got to say, when you're looking eye to fishy eye, tuna are awesome creatures. A speeding torpedo with its sights set on plucking that pilchard right from your hand. <laughs> Their agility and stealth is just mind-blowing. Never mind Ferraris, these guys are more like freight trains. All the staff out here are marine biologists, so they really know their stuff. Peter Priest loves sharing his passion for the ocean with visitors. This is a unique opportunity to jump in the water with some local South Australian aquatic species, have a really good time, great experience, and learn a bit about South Australian aquaculture and fisheries at the same time. It's a really important commercial fishery in South Australia, an industry worth millions of dollars annually. These guys come from that fishery, but having said that, these fish will live here for their whole lives. They're not part of the fishing industry anymore, so they're the lucky ones, I guess. It's incredible. It's so quick. They're so powerful. I'll give you the hot tip. They are not shy. You've got to try this. But if the idea of jumping in the aquarium doesn't exactly float your boat, you can always pole feed the tuna, which is a lot of fun. Or head downstairs to their underwater viewing area for a look beneath the surface. So if you don't like the water and you don't like to get yourself wet, you can still get up close and personal with the tuna. Have a look at the size of these things. And while the tuna are a big part of this marine encounter, it's not all about them. In the middle aquarium, you'll find a growing collection of local species like snapper and Port Jackson sharks. And above deck, a fascinating touch pond, which is home to all sorts of sea critters, like crayfish, scallops, and sea urchins. He's pretty prickly, that one, but he's uh, pretty prickly. Uh, he's yeah. moving around. Yeah, look at him go. Mick Dyer is the co-owner of Oceanic Victor and jumped at the chance to help reinvigorate Granite Island as a tourist destination, adding not only the aquarium, but a much needed cafe. It's, in my opinion, one of the prettiest, nicest national parks in the state and it just needed a bit of TLC and hopefully we're giving it that and slowly bring it back to its former glory. The penguins must approve because they're slowly but surely returning to the island, a magical sight you can witness on one of their regular guided penguin tours. Head to the Oceanic Victor website for all tour details and to book. The Swim With The Tuna experience usually takes around two hours and includes the quick boat trip and the hire of a warm wetsuit, booties and gloves. And take it from me, it truly is an experience of a lifetime and one that you'll be talking about for years to come. Well, that's all we've got time for on the show today. I hope you've enjoyed taking a look around South Australia and we've inspired you to do the same. If you'd like any further information, just head to our website. And we look forward to your company again next time for more SA Weekender favourites.